Welcome back to the Peerless Members Only video group. I am Katie North and today we are going to be painting moths. So I have one right here. I have always loved butterflies and this obsession with moths is probably within the last couple years. I just think they're so cool and they're like, oh, they're just so cool. There's so many different shapes and colors and really weird, funky uniqueness. And then all of a sudden there's like this like, iridescent or fuzzy factor. I love it all. So today we're gonna do the moth. It is um, a lot more simple than it looks like. Just a little bit of patience, but I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. All right, to get started, we are going to need to do our outlining of our moth. So you're going to want to use a pencil and make sure it's very light on the watercolor paper. That's just because we're not going to do any harsh or black outlining and we want it to be very gentle and soft so when you put the watercolor down you don't see the graphite of your pencil or a pen. If you want to use pen that's it's fine it's just going to look a little bit more um, like more illustrated which would definitely look cool too. So if you would like to follow along on the left hand side this is the image that I drew in Procreate and how I drew it out and then it or you can use your light box or a bright window to trace it onto your watercolor paper especially with something this detailed and kind of knowing exactly where all the little placements are I like to use my light box just so I have a nice crisp clean page that I, ha I don't have to erase any marks or to kind of know exactly where the pencil is going and it keeps the page really clean and you know keeps the fibers of the watercolor without being too roughed up by um, eraser marks or anything like that too. So once you get it down on your paper, we will start painting. All right, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about our color theory. So we're using three different colors and it's going to be our kind of neutral to bright kind of color wheel. So we have the yellow to brown and the olive green to kind of a lime green and then the art of pink is kind of a hot pink to like a, um, like a soft rosy pink. And so when you mix pink and green, you get kind of um, like more muted tones. And if you mix it with the yellow, you can get kind of these dusty rose colors. But since these three colors that I picked have such like a, a high to low gradient in, in color, like what I mean is how bright it is when it's yellow, but if by the time you do the um, a more concentrated wash, it's almost brown and you lose all of those colors, you're able to do like a full spectrum of colors just with these three tones and it turns out really pretty. So instead of that yellow, we add a little bit of green and it gets kind of more of a limey green. And then when you add the pink in it, it kind of makes the shadows. And then the darker versions of all of them, you can have like a rose, rose pinky color. You can get an orange if you mix the pink and the orange. And, um, and yeah, so there's just like endless amounts of colors between these three and I think they work so well together. And the reference photo that I originally looked at to do this moth, those were all the pretty much colors that I almost color swatched it exactly from from the photo that I was using to all of my color swatches on my wall of all my colors. And I was like, wow, these look really awesome together. So I hope you like the color choices. Um, right now we are laying down the first wash of paint and we are doing the upper half of the moth and then where all of the really gentle veins are, they're going to be the lightest color once we get more washes down. So we're going to put that lightest color 
down first so we know that we've established those areas. So in all of the pink areas, you don't wanna put yellow just because you do the second wash, a yellow with a pink over it, it'll be orange. So anywhere it's gonna be a green or a lime green, you can put your wash of the yellow down and those very skinny little accent lines that are kind of the veins on the, um, the wings, you're gonna do a very light. So in this color too is very intense. So you'll notice right when you're putting it down, if you have too much pigment it gets very dark so you want to make sure it's a very transparent layer of that first color and I'm I know I'm not actually saying the color that's just because I don't no, actually know the correct way to pronounce it <laughs> we're just gonna call it the yellow brown uh for the uh the rest of the tutorial because I don't want to pronounce it wrong so all right so once you get your first wash down I'll be back in a minute to check on you So now I'm going to start adding some pink into the tails of the moth and this one I kind of feathered down a little bit of the yellow and then I outlined the edge of the outside of the moth tails and then all I'm doing is in the center is just making sure there's enough water on my watercolor brush with a clean amount and I am blending softly the yellow to the pink so you have the darkest pink on the very edge and then it's blending in the middle and the center of each side into the yellow and then I'm going to be working my way down the moth tails with um, the Artemis pink and still a very light version and there is a little bit of um, kind of yellow and green at the very very bottom of the tail so just kind of leave there that space to um, we'll do that one in a little bit. So once you get right about here, you're going to wash off all of the paint from your brush and you're going to put in the yellow and blend it up into the pink. And that just kind of keeps that area lighter of that yellow. So when we're ready for the next washes, that color is already down there.
All right, so this next step, we are going to be doing a few sections at a time. And we are going to be blending the green down into the pink in a gradient. So it's going to start with green, and then we're gonna wash off the extra green of our brush and add a little bit of pink, and then kind of mix the pink and the green together and then wash it off again. And then by the time it's at the bottom half of the moth wing, it is going to be full pink. So this only works if your paper is wet enough, but not too wet. And I'm doing it in sections just because I don't want there to be any drying edges um, like you would get if the paper started to dry before you were able to do the blend. So a couple troubleshooting things with this. I'm only doing a couple of sections at a time because I know that this paper dries a little bit faster than my normal Archie's. And if you're having trouble getting a soft blend, it might be that your paper isn't as good quality and you're leaving it too long before you put down the next layer of color. So you can see here, I have added the green and I wanna work relatively quickly just because I want to get that blend going before I get any of those things. And you guys know that look too, like when the water starts to dry and you can't really blend out that line as much. And sometimes you kind of like rough up the paper a little bit too much. That kind of depends on paper quality. So like if you were using Archie's and something with a little bit higher quality, you're, you would be able to blend that a little bit more and not worry about it. But so you can see here in the middle, I've mixed a little bit of the pink and green and kind of blending those softly and then wiping off the excess of that paint. And then at the bottom is going to be purely just the light version of the pink. And then as it's still wet, kind of just blending it and making that really soft transition from green to pink. One of the things that I have found that helps too is just actually just wiping off the paintbrush and making sure that the paint is green, especially when you're trying to do these blends with a, such a um, like a transparent color and they're so light, the tiniest little bit of green in the pink can tint it to change the tone. So just kind of make it a habit of wiping off the extra paint on your paper towel. That way when you know when you're working on your painting, if there's an area that you want to blend, that it's a clean um, a clean paintbrush too. So kind of just little tricks like that kind of help you keep it um, a little bit smoother, smoother going. All right, so another way to do it, I wanted to show you another option, is to do a little bit more heavy amount of paint and blend it as it goes. This is a little bit trickier because you don't want any of the green to go down on the bottom of there, but if you're comfortable enough kind of mixing the, paper, like the paint on the paper, um, you can do it like this. You lay down a big kind of blob of the pink, make sure you go all the way down to the very edge before you start mixing. And then while it's still wet, connect the green to the pink. And um, you can use the same kind of like wipe a little extra off the paintbrush. But this way is a little bit quicker, um, but it just kind of depends on your comfort level for making those blends.
honestly, I've already feel like it looks really pretty. Like it's such a delicate, pretty moth that like, even if I just left it alone right there, everybody would know what it was. And it's just so simple and pretty. But we're going to add a little bit more detail. So with a stronger um, amount, more uh, saturated amount of the pink, we're going to do the top half of, or I guess more of like a little like an outline of the moth and it's in all of the pink. And we're kind of going to bring it down a little bit into the little, um, they kind of look like little eyelets. Like, you know, I don't know what they're called. Just a little design that kind of swoops down on both sides of the wing. Um, and just start to kind of uh, outline that a little bit with the pink and then move it all the way across. So now we're just going to touch up a little bit where those wings are coming into the center a little bit more, just a little bit more of the green and the pink. And then we're going to be creating the shadow, um, kind of like where the wing overlaps the body of the moth. And we're going to be using that um, yellow to brown and a little bit more saturated with it so it turns to more of the brown. And so right at the very edge of the wing, there's a very skinny outline of the yellow, you wanna make sure to leave that because that's gonna give it a really nice highlighted area. And then the shadow of the um, the wing is gonna kinda just softly make that pop up a little bit and make it look a, a little bit more um, two-dimensional. Or three-dimensional? Two-dimensional, three-dimensional. Three-dimensional. <laughs> so you can see here how soft that little bit of the yellow kinda turns a little bit more brownish. You can add a little bit of green too. But that first layer where we put that more of the um, yellow tone, how much lighter it is makes it pop up and then your vision makes it seem like it's higher. <laughs> and then again on the other side, and I love the contrast between the green and the pink. I feel like they're so pretty together and just having those lightest tones of that yellow be the veins and the edges of it just makes the, the whole shape of it kind of pop out. I think it's so pretty. And then, um, yeah, so yeah, so once we've added that like shadow area between the, the, the wing and the, ba the base of the body, um, I just want to kind of pop up some of those pinks a little bit more so we still have that soft blend in there too. So outlining again and re-blending those pinks into the green of the body. Then moving back out a little bit more, all of those little furry, you know, hands and arms or <laughs> whatever you call them on a moth. Maybe I should look up like, um, I don't know, anatomy of the moth. So I'm saying all the correct things, but I feel like little furry arms are just as, just as well. <laughs> so once you get all the furry little arms in there, you can add a little bit of pink into that yellow area. And when you mix the pink into the yellow, you get kind of this like really soft, like sherbet-y orange color. And especially when you mix it with the green too, oh, it just gets so good. So each little tiny detail just adds an, an extra little layer of texture and depth. And even though there's really not a ton of paint on this painting, all of those little details just give it like just that little bit extra to make it so pretty. So working around again, um, I am trying to just make sure those little veins are as skinny as I'd like them to be. I'm trying not to do too much of this though, just because if I start mixing or not mixing, but laying down another layer, I have the potential to not have that soft blend anymore. Then it looks more outlined and I definitely want to keep it more soft 
and the nice clean smooth transition but as you can see there's some areas that need a little bit of sprucing um so let's see and then back up again i do a second wash of the pink along the top of the moth just because i want that color and that tone of the pink to be different than the tone on the bottom um, and i wanted to have that punch to it too to kind of outline the top since the bottom is so um so light and delicate and then let's see what else do we do next once you've got your lines a little bit darker on the edges, you can bring it down into those little eyelet designs and get them a little bit darker too. And I do go back over these afterwards with a, um, a black micron pen, just where like the little top of it is, just because I wanted it to be super sharp and kind of um, more, I mean, yeah, the reference photo I was looking at has them a little bit darker too. So I didn't want them to be too light and I like the contrast so that will be that will be after uh, right so now we are going around and I outlined this bottom wing with pink and then I decided later that I did not actually like it <laughs> so but you don't have to do that if you don't want to and I actually think it's a little bit prettier when it's the softness of that little yellow but that's fine this one I'm like oh wait no I definitely like this side better so I'm just not gonna do it on this side because you know it's your painting and you can do whatever you want to it <laughs> that was like my little like oh no moment um but yes and then going back through on the bottom so now that we have the darker second wash of the green and the pink that kind of make the wings pop up we need to add some details that kind of separate the different um tails of the wing from each other so I am doing that with the pink and over the pink and the green it kind of creates the nice little veins and are super super gentle and delicate and then again again on the other side um and that just kind of helps bring out those veins that are kind of like at the top but a little bit you know in shadow for underneath in that second layer And this is what I was kind of saying before. I'm trying to touch up the areas around the veins and make the veins super tiny and delicate and, you know, skinnier and more, more clean lined. And you can see, you can see the pink as I'm laying it down, it creates more of a line and I lose that blending that I really love so much between the green and the pink. So you can definitely do this. It's all personal preference. Uh, I try to blend it out a little bit but I did kind of try to stop myself from doing too much just because I didn't want to lose the, um, the gradient between the pink and the green and how soft it is. So at it's all personal preference on how much or how little you would like to do with that. Thank you. 
right, so now we're going to do the little feathery tentacle, little antenna, I don't even know. They look like feather antennas. I think they're so cool. Um, I used a artist pen in the color brown, or you could use orange or something in between any of those color. Maybe even like a, a red would look kind of cool too. Um, pretty simple though. I kind of outlined the shape of it and now I'm just drawing lines from the outside towards the center. And if you've ever seen a picture of one of these moths or one in real life, I don't, I don't know if I've ever seen one in real life. I would be just like amazed to see it. But they have um, very cool antenna things. <laughs> so, and this one in, the, in my reference photo was pretty close to this brown. So that's why I chose this color. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Thank you so much for watching. And if you try this tutorial, make sure you tag us because we would love to see your paintings. We'll see you next time.